uh, I went into the gym and the, to, to interview for a personal training position. It went really poorly. She told me I was doing my exercise all wrong, and it was it was I was a certified personal trainer. I was a certified personal uh, correctional exercise specialist. I had three years of managing cut. Like there's so many things that I saw the patterns and I knew what would be successful and what wouldn't be. And I knew that what I was doing was actually really good. And, and it was horrible. And I wasn't taken seriously. Let's talk about weight loss and emotions. And I like hesitate to talk about the topic of weight loss because I think when we focus on that number, it is a very dangerous place to be because then we get so hyper-focused on the number instead of what it actually, like the whole process. And the process is the entire point. Um, like the end goal is obviously important because being in a healthier spot physically our body is going to take better care of us and we're going to have better health and better outcomes for all these things. Sometimes it's not what we end up focusing on. We end up focusing on that number on the scale and that number on the scale is going to go up and down no matter what you do because we're human and we have water weight and muscle mass weighs, weighs differently than like muscle is so much more dense than fat and so there's like all these factors that go into um, our health journey, a health and wellness journey, and and we just get so hyper focused on something that's a symptom instead of the root cause, and that's what I want to talk to you about is my journey, um, and my weight loss journey, because the thing is I didn't really set out to lose weight per se. I knew I needed to, but like it wasn't. Uh, like, uh, I'm gonna sit here and lose 50 pounds. Um, and that was never the case. It was, um, the last 15 years I've spent healing my emotions. I realized that, um, so this weather has been so weird. Like, I sat here because look how nice it is. It's so nice out. But the, like, sun went behind the clouds, so it was really nice. But then it, like, rained for a minute. And I thought I was gonna have to end the last podcast, but now the sun's back out and it's like, pfft, I'm sweating now. <laughs> After church, I'm in nice clothes. Look at these shoes, by the way. Like, can you see them? <laughs> They're from the TikTok shop. Anyways, so. Um, so are these. Side note. Anyways, so <laughs> you can find them on my page at Brick Center. So, um. Uh, da, 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 da. So mine started, I don't know, four or five months ago, maybe, maybe even six months ago. So no, no, mine started many years ago. So I grew up in a verbally abusive home. My, my dad, um, did the best he could and made the best choices he could, but he was gone most of the time because he was working. Um, like 90% of the time he was gone. He was only home for a couple hours at a time, if even, um, because he worked a couple of jobs and there at one point he worked several and it wasn't always close and and so like he you know he left me and my sister with my mom and my mom is verbally abusive and has really 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 horrible patterns that I as a child um had better not need anything and if I do I'm the problem like even if it was like the smallest things. And on top of that, I had to take care of her needs. Um, like I didn't have to like take care of her physical needs because she wasn't like an alcoholic or anything, but all of her emotional needs, like I was not allowed to have any emotions and I needed to, to carry hers. Um, and so that weighed on me a lot of my life. And so that caused, caused a lot of, because your brain, uh, if you've ever read The Body Keeps Score, if you haven't, I highly recommend it. The, it talks a lot about trauma and how as a child, we develop our patterns that are gonna go into adulthood. And it's not impossible to break free from them, but they're very much there that we don't think about and don't realize and often don't even know that we even went through trauma. Um, and that was definitely my story is I didn't know that I even went through trauma. And so these, these patterns were developed in my brain where it was, I am not allowed to have any needs, and if I do, I have issues, Either I am not okay, I am not a worthwhile human being, and I need to take care of everybody else's needs, and if I can't do that, then I am not a worthwhile human being, and that's just not, 
that's just not human. Um, <laughs> like we can't function like that. That's not a healthy place to be. And so uh, it was around 15 ish years ago that I started to realize that my mom was verb verbally abusive. And so I've been in and out of counseling. I've been out of therapy, uh, all the things, all those things. I've read a lot of books. Uh, books are super helpful, especially because like one of those things that came with that trauma was um, pushing people away because if I need help then I'm a burden and I'm a, I'm a menace to society basically and if I have a need so um, that that caused me to push a lot of people away and um, in my like mid 20s I realized how important and how much health like healthy eating and and exercise can heal things and I did more and more research on it because I get like focused and I go all in and so I did lots and lots of research on like all these things like like diet as in like lifestyle healthy changes and exercise I've always been against diets but the, I've fallen trap into them and they don't last because honestly 10 years ago so let's let's fast forward to 10 years ago is when I started I had worked at I had managed a, cur a curves for three years which is a gym and I had done like the special programs I had trained the staff members I had trained the clients I had done all the things to um, work at this gym and so I decided I wanted to do personal training I wanted to get deeper into this and um, I was in a really intense like um, exercise plan for myself and everything and uh i went into the gym and the to, to interview for a personal training position it went really poorly she told me i was doing my exercise all wrong and it was it was i was certified personal trainer i was certified personal uh, correctional exercise specialist i had three years of managing like there's so many things that i saw the patterns and i knew what would be successful and what wouldn't be and i knew that what i was doing was actually really good and and it was horrible and i wasn't taken seriously and i did honestly it's exactly what i expected so it just fed my insecurities um but at that time, what I was doing wasn't sustainable because I didn't have the tools to go forward because the root of a lot of my issues were emotional and I knew it, but I didn't really know how to like overcome that. And I feel like that's a lot of people's stories. And that's why I read so many books. And that's why like I have so many conversations with people and meeting them. And I, I know that my story is so similar to so many people's. Um, I'm not alone in this story because I've just heard so many. And plus in the books, some of the books that I've read, there's been so many stories that have been similar. Uh, and like, I think, I firmly believe that a huge problem with weight loss is the fact that people don't have the tools to actually deal with the emotional cause, which is oftentimes I believe the root. And it's not always for sure. Like the, we are not two dimensional human beings. We are three dimensional. We are all different. We all operate differently. We all function differently. I could get on these exercise plans and stick to them and be super intense, but that was just it. A, I was going from one extreme to another, and B, I didn't have the tools to manage my emotions, so there was no chance of it being successful. And the thing, the reason that I, I have no doubt in my mind right now that what I'm doing is gonna stick is because over the last six months, or so, um, I finally felt a shift after almost 15 years. Like I went through so much, I've had a lot of physical healing to go through too. Um, so that also threw me off because uh, three years ago I almost died of COVID. Um, like I was on my deathbed. And now I have some permanent lung damage, but like I'm in, I feel better than I felt in 20 years now. Um, so like going through all this emotional, physical healing, it's all, it's all been this like huge journey and it's been a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to deal with. But now I have tools that I can actually deal with it. I have a good support system and I have tools that I can actually consistently process my emotions. I wonder if it's going to storm. It just thundered. You see those clouds over there? Anyways. Hopefully it doesn't start boring. Um, now I have all the tools to be able to deal with it. And so about six months ago, I felt this huge shift. And I was like, 
I didn't really notice at first, but then I thought about it and I was like, well, that's interesting because I'm not like craving all this junk food that I was craving before. And like if you're eating it occasionally, I wouldn't label it junk food, but if you're eating it all the time, it's junk food. Um, it's not helping your body. And I knew that and I was struggling so much that like I didn't know how to like get out of this pattern. There is a bumblebee. A big bumblebee. Okay. Um, <laughs> I didn't know how to get out of this pattern. And so um, it, I was using willpower. That's And when you're constantly using willpower, it doesn't work. Um, using willpower from time to time, absolutely necessary. But when you're using it day in and day out, it you just shut down and like that's exactly what I ended up I was in fire or flight mode all the time and so I my body was in constant fear of and just living in survival mode and that doesn't work <laughs> it's it, it leads you to unhealthy behaviors especially if you don't know how to cope with those emotions and the more that I've studied the more that I've gone to therapies the more that I have done all these things for self-improvement read books listen to people um, the more that I've realized that uh, the more that I've gained tools to be able to deal with it. And so about six months ago, I felt this huge shift finally, and I wasn't having the cravings anymore. And I know this doesn't sound like a lot, but I was eating like a couple pieces of chocolate every day instead of like just all this junk food all day long. And I was like knowing my bot, I could feel when I was full, I could, I can feel in my body now the actual natural body hues that I, I couldn't feel before. Like they just weren't existent. Like the emotions were so like crammed in there and they it was like blocking, I don't know, this is not scientific by any means, but it was like blocking all the cues so that my body was like, I don't understand what's happening. Um, so I like just felt like I was hungry all the time and it just, it just, it messed me up big time. Um, and so I've, I'd gotten through all that and I was in a much, much better place with my eating and I was happier about it. I still wasn't like happy with where I was, but it wasn't like as far as my eating goes. Um, but I was in a much better place and I knew I had a much, 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 much healthier relationship with food. Um, and I, the, none of this was ever conscious. I was never like, oh, I'm gonna eat to take care of my emotions. Because like, I, you know, you hear that all the time, but I was like, it does, it, I'm sure that's what I do. I knew, intuition told me that's what I was doing, but I was like, I don't know when I'm doing it. I feel hungry, so I eat. And like that, but it was like those like cravings and stuff were, were usually because something deeper was going on and I wasn't dealing with it. Um, and so now that I have, when I have a craving, like if I have a, a craving, like I don't think twice about it. And so a lot, a lot of times I'll just give into it. Like, cause like now I'm eating like one or two like pieces of chocolate a week and like we're good. Um, and I'm not really eating chips or anything like that. So like I'm eating a lot better and I'm eating lots of fruits and vegetables. So, um, unless it's so like, but like if I have a day where like craving keeps coming at me, I'm like, oh, okay, something with my emotions is probably going on right now and it's been really easy to work out and so about a month and a half ago I lost my aunt to lung cancer it was a really fast process it was like three three weeks she went to the hospital and never came out um it was super fast it was super aggressive it was super painful and she's somebody that I grew up with and she was like a third parent basically and and just she she taught me about makeup to start with and all the girly things and you know like and she basically taught me how to drive and, and she was just, she lived almost two hours away because she got married when I was like three or four and moved to where, moved in with him and he's, he lived in another town. And so she's been a ways away for a while, but she was still really close and heard a weird sound. Um, and so like that was really hard. It was really hard. I was pro I was really proud of myself because I was processing things as they came, but I still fell into some bad habits of pushing people away. I didn't realize until like the end of the process, but it was such a fast process. It was really hard to like pick up things. And during the process, I pushed people away. I quickly realized because it was a short process, um, but I recognized it. I didn't ever recognize it up until that point. I never recognized when I was pushing people away, but I did at that point. So I was really proud of the fact that I made progress of like being able to process my emotions throughout the whole thing and then being able to recognize that I was pushing people away. And um, 
And so for the past six months, my eating has been back uh, in, a, in a much better spot. And then it was about, oh, um, so my aunt died June 2nd and today is July 23rd. Um, so it was like a month and a half ago and it was like shortly after that I, I found Dr. Mike's content actually this was a whole healing process of its own because if you don't know who Dr. Mike is, I highly recommend going to look him up. Um, I can give you some recommendations if you want, but, um, because like, okay, hold, there's so much to this. So this was a whole healing process of its own because like four or five years ago or so I found his content and I didn't like him at all but it had nothing to do with him i didn't know that until i rediscovered this content i rediscovered this content and i was like i don't like this guy i don't want to see him and then i was like why don't i like this guy let me let me see what he's posting and see and then i realized oh i it had nothing to do with him i didn't like him because when i discovered his content it had only been a few months i've had a few bad experiences with some creators one in particular i was really good friends with who had millions of followers and things went ended up going really badly and he was not who he was putting out and he was actually the biggest jerk I've ever met in my life um and so because it was such a short time after that I met I, I not met I came across Dr. Mike's content I was like mm, this guy's a jerk <laughs> he's just full of himself and I'm like no that's actually far from the truth I was just so hurt at the time and had had to heal um that I couldn't like see past that so <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, we're, we're gonna go ahead and give this content a chance. Like, I was still really hesitant watching it, but I was like, I'm gonna give it a chance. This is a doctor. I don't, I don't know how much I trust it because I've had some bad medical experiences as well. Um, whereas, like, I'm very, very much of the holistic approach mind, if I, if you can. But, like, medicine, I, I don't disbel- I don't- think medicine is unnecessary like some people um i just think that if we can do do holistic first let's do that um because our bodies have an amazing ability to heal themselves if we treat them right and do the right things except for sometimes um whereas like the medical field in general like wants to be like no our bodies can't do anything you need this and this and this and, this. and i'm like no, no 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 um so like i've had some really bad experiences not been listened to like just just bad experiences um and so i have been one that has just been like no no i'm gonna do this on my own because i want the natural i want as much as i possibly can if i need the medicine i'll take the medicine um and i it's not like i've never taken medicine i have um but like i want to do the natural approach as much as i possibly can and no one listens to me they think i'm crazy and they sit there and tell me how horrible i am um or like because i'm because i'm a woman and because i'm overweight like those are both working against me and then the natural stuff like all three factors working so hard against me and i'm just like so i had like just kind of lost hope and gave up and was like forget the medical field i don't trust doctors so when i found him i was like fine i'll give him a chance the dad jokes drew me in but then as i listened to him talk more i'm like oh wait he is actually very much about the holistic approach and the medical approach as well um not just the whole medical medicine and so we have very similar mindsets in that and we have very similar mindsets in like um self-improvement and healing the emotional it's mind and body it's what we're one being it's not like we're like all these separate beings and emotions are very much tied into that as well and he's read some of the same books and stuff like that so like listening to his content i'm like oh we have really similar mindsets on a lot of things here so maybe there's hope for me finding a doctor. So it was, um, it was about, a, it was a couple weeks into that, that I was like, um, I, I take these aqua classes, aqua fitness classes in the summer at the, at the outdoor pools. And, and this is my third year. And I was like, maybe it's time to take it year round. Like maybe I should look into gyms. I'm in a place where I could buy a gym membership now. Um, and so I found a gym attached to a hospital. And since this was happening at the same time that I was discovering I needed healing in the medical medicine area as well, I was like, oh man, I gotta go there. 
so I took the tour and then and it's interesting because like because of that one thing like this one thing that I did of watching Dr. Mike's videos it led to so much healing in this area from a few years ago that I was so hurt by a friend and then it also led to starting to heal my medicine journey um, and in that, that led to me going, maybe I should think about teaching a few classes. And now I have a job at two different gyms and it, and that led to me being healed from my first encounter 10 years ago with my uh, personal training, going into that in the gym area and not being taken seriously because now like everybody, the, the people that I've encountered have been so excited and so welcoming and open arms. If you want to know more about that, I, did, I said, I told more about that in my last um, podcast. So last week, um, but like, this has been such a healing journey and, and like it all started with watching some Dr. Mike videos and I never like, I'm working, I am now working at a gym attached to a hospital. I'm working at Carl and I'm just like, I, <laughs> The, what who am I right now like what so like this is like really far out of my it's been so it's been healing on the fitness side uh, um, like as far as like being uh, professionally in the fitness field uh, but it's also taken me way out of my comfort zone because I'm like the fact that it's at even at a hospital I'm like mm, this is like so far out of my comfort zone it's not even funny so <laughs> But I wanted to talk to you about the emotional side of things because so often we sit here and go push all these like diet and fitness plans, especially these big influencers who like so much of it is terrible advice and so much of it like they Photoshop themselves so much just so you know, like most of the time what you're seeing isn't real anyways. And then they're saying like to get to here you do this, this and this and like just it doesn't speak to the average person first of all. And like so much of it is just lies it's 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 just crap um if you want me to start debunking some of that stuff let me know because i'll gladly go into things for you um maybe not gladly frustratedly go into things for you uh, but let me know if you find videos like hey hey what, what do you think of this um but yeah so like finding or uh, wa starting to watch his videos led to all of these other things uh, of healing um, past wounding and friendships, healing m medicine relationship, healing uh, like doctor medicine, well, I don't know how to do that, but you know what I mean. Um, and then also healing even in my professional fitness journey. And it's just <laughs> been like this crazy thing. But like so often we overlook the emotional aspect and I know that's been huge factor in being able to heal all of these things and being able to even be on a weight loss journey that I that I'm like so I don't have proof yet but keep up with me and and we'll see for sure but like I I really feel like in the past I've never felt like I was going to be successful um I have a lot of confidence right now that this is going to be lasting and so come along for the ride, come along for the journey. There's hope for you. I promise if you have been hurt like me, uh, know that there is healing that can happen. There is restoration in the, in the, on the horizon if you're willing to take that risk again, if you're willing to do the scary thing. And like I tell, I tell my followers, I tell you guys a lot, like the way to grow is to face your fears. And that's what I've been doing. I'm pu I put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, and bringing you along for the journey. So dream big, take action. I love ya.